Pray Before I Eat is a PB4IE, I would say, is an acronym that, that stands for Pray Before I Eat. And um, my, my mom always told me before the games, you know, always give thanks that I'm able to play the game. Um, I'm very fortunate and thankful to, you know, to, to be talented, talented and, um, you know, through the gifts that God gave me. So um, throughout high school, she started really kind of telling me that, that I need to start doing that. And um, I kind of took it and ran with it. Um, out of high school is kind of when I uh, created, I would say, my sophomore year. Um, and I kind of started to say before each game and kind of getting my teammates um, curious about it. And they would ask, what does that mean? What does that mean? And I would just tell them, like, you know, pray right before I eat, like. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And you know, the purpose of this podcast, we love to focus on stories, strategies, and success to ultimately be a resource to serve and support student athletes, helping them as they try to navigate this sticky world of life post graduation and, and everything mm-hmm. like that, meantime and between time. Man, and I'm excited today because I got a gentleman that I've been seeing do, do some amazing things over the past couple of years. And, and of course, you know, through six degrees of separation, me and him actually happen to be connected. So I have the one and the only Mike Hoops for God. Mike, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Man, every, everything is going good on this side, brother. Everything is going good on this side. Mike, I, I, I want to just pass the rock to you, no look, and uh, give you a chance to, you know, just, just, just tell the people a little snippet about yourself and, and just, you know, uh, yeah, just, just, just a minute, just share a little bit with the people about you. Well, um, first and foremost, I'm, uh, I'm Michael Kalawali. Uh, I'm uh, originally from Dallas, Texas, uh, West Suburbs, a city called Rowlett. Um, you know, my family is actually from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, uh, I'm the youngest out of four, so um, that's a little bit about me. Cool, cool, cool. So you said your family is originally from Nigeria. So what what tribe would you would you fall into, or what tribe would would your family be associated with? I'm Yoruba. I'm Yoruba okay. tribe. Yeah. Okay, dope, dope. Yeah, you didn't know I knew a little bit, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't man. expecting that. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. So yeah, man. One of one of the dudes I hoop with, man, he, he's my brother to this day. But um, yeah, man, he's he's from the Ebo tribe, and uh, okay. j- so just getting to hang out with him and learn learn a little bit about him, and you know, j- just about his life and stuff like that. I've I've been I've learned a little bit more about about the Nigerian culture, and uh, right. man, so so just understand that and, and knowing that I know a little bit. What would be your your favorite traditional dish, I guess, of of, of the Nigerian culture, man? I love I love them all to be honest, but my 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 go to my favorite would probably be fufu and uh, jollof rice. Okay, okay. Can you fufu can you talk a little rice. bit? Yeah, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Just, just for people who might not be familiar with with, with what fufu is and, and and what jollof rice is, can you go just just explain a little bit about that for the people? Well, fufu is kind of like a, a, a mashed yam um, type of type of thing. It looks like mashed potatoes, but it's uh it's it's cooked over the stove and um you you can cook it with you know with your spices with your stew um usually it's our spices and you know we we we, we put uh, our spices in it or we put um, um spinach for our side and we also put our our meats or stuff like uh fish or smoked turkey for for like our you know for our meat so um Ultimately, it's, you know, on a plate, um, it's a big, uh, depending on your preference, uh, the portion size, but typically for my, uh, my weight and my height, I typically, <laughs> typically get something like this, um, a lot of uh, spinach on it on the side and a lot of stew and uh, with like uh, probably two, a couple of fishes and, or a couple of smoked turkeys. So that's uh, fufu ultimately, but it's pretty good. Cool, cool. 
Yeah, and it's funny you said that you, I mean, the, the, the size of the food you get depends on, you know, what, like what you like, what you need, what your appetite look like. Mike, one time I, I, I was at my boy, his name Boozo. I was at Boozo's house. This was the first time I visited down in Houston. And then she was like, go in the kitchen, get something to eat. And I started fixing my plate. And then she was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You so, you so skinny, you must eat. And I was like, well, wait, I'm yeah. trying to, you know, I'm trying to be polite. I'm trying to just fix a decent sized portion. Man, yeah. Mike, I, I wasn't ready for that portion <laughs> she put on my plate, man. I wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, you know, we're very generous with the food. We, you know, we expect if you're um, in our house, so we expect you to eat like us. And, you know, you know, and I'm not surprised that she wanted you to get the most of, you know, what she cooked because, you know, we eat it often. It's good. Yeah. 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 So so be, so coming up from from you being or, 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 or having three other siblings where you, you said you were the youngest you are the youngest yeah okay okay so so just talk a little bit about like you growing up and when the ball fir first got placed in your hand because i know like i said you know you you know you're doing some cool things and w with your handle mike hoops for god you know so just talk, talk just talk talk a little bit about where that came from and when the ball first got put in your hand man um well um, yeah, being the youngest out of four kind of was, uh, coming from a competitive family was, you know, kind of hard. Uh, like you said, uh, my older brother, he's, a, you know, he was an athlete. My older sister was also an athlete and my other older sister was an athlete. So, so, um, the ball was really placed in my hand. Um, I ultimately had a love for it because my, uh, my older sister, that's not the oldest, my second oldest sister. Mm -hmm. Um, she was uh, you know, she she loved basketball. That was her passion and and for us to uh, you know, to um kind of spend time together and kinda uh, you know, uh be around each other, that was our, our thing was hoops. We if we wasn't watching it, we was outside playing against each other or, you know, we was learning new moves and I kinda looked up to her. So, you know, in second grade, uh was the was the moment I felt like I wanted to take it serious and you know, I kind of started to have a passion and a, and a love for it. So, you know, that's where uh, I guess you would say I started playing. It was in second grade. So, Mike, I got to ask, who's the best out of all four of y'all? Who, who's the best? <laughs> I would say myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would say myself. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> dope, dope, dope. So, so you went to – so you played basketball in – in Raleigh, and then and then from Raleigh, you went to you went to play at, at the next level. You played Division One basketball. You're playing yeah. playing playing at the next level. So Mike, just man, so a, a lot of student athletes li listen to the podcast. So the the ones who may be in the space to where you know they're high school and they're aspiring to make it just to that level. Can can you talk just to just to what your commitment was from you going from from Rowlett to where you were to then going and being able to play and, and compete on the Division One level? Um, yeah, it's all, I feel like it's all about setting goals for yourself. You know, um, you know, it started, like I said, in second grade, it playing in my head. I had certain goals for myself, you know, as I, I started to progress, as time started to go by, um, as I started to age, sixth grade, I was progressing. I wanted to do city champs. I set goals for myself. Um, after that, um, going into high school, um, my goal, I set small goals to reach, to, and then I set large goals. My goal was to get on varsity. You know, I was on uh, freshman A team my freshman year, you know, went undefeated, got moved up to JV and, uh, you know, was on so uh, varsity my sophomore year. So as I set small goals for myself, it then, it then led to, to big goals. Then I, uh, for AAU, I played for the Dallas Mustangs in the summertime. So mm -hmm. my goal then was, you know, this summer I need, you know, I need scholarships. I need, I need to uh, put myself in position to, so my family, you know, wouldn't have to worry about my education, you know? And so that was my drive, that was my goal. So as the summers went by, um, competing with, you know, with uh, a great organization such as the Dallas Mustangs, it, it put me on a, a stage to, to uh, accomplish that goal. So it, coming to Rowlett, I was able to, you know, showcase what I could do um, for my city and for my team and, and, and uh, I was able to get multiple uh, uh, scholarship offers, and I eventually chose to go to the University of Illinois at Chicago, out of Chicago, and um, I played two years there. Um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't go, you know, the way I planned it, um, which is okay, 
Um, so I came home back to Lamar University for uh, for one year before um, uh, hiring agent and pursuing my my dreams as a professional. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I feel like it's just like you know to answer your question, just setting goals for yourself um, and and working day in and day out to reach them. You're going to have trials, tribulations, and everything um, going to uh, be in the way of, of that. But you have to, you know, believe in yourself and, and just find a way and make the most out of every opportunity. Yeah, Mike, you over there being humble because, man, one thing pe- people may not know out, 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 out here, man, is is the Dallas Mustangs are solid. Yes, sir. Like, yeah, like I mean, the Dallas <laughs> Mustangs have been solid since I don't know how long, because people people out there listening in in podcast land, there's a few teams that that I just know just in this area, and Mike, you probably can attest to this as well. The Dallas Mustangs is one of them, but then also I think it was like the Garland Bulls was like it was it was like those two teams. Like I, I watch people just just kill it on those two teams, and I watch them elevate, mm-hmm. uh, man, from that point. So, Mike, I mean, I know you were on that team for a reason because, you know, you're a baller. Uh, but I want you to talk a little bit just about, like, because you said that, you, you, you like, you know, you, you were at one particular college and you needed to shift to, to another because, you know, I was, I was in the same position. I, I played with, with two different colleges. But can you just talk, talk to the fact of student athletes needing to understand how much more it is outside of just the sport? like to, to, to make it work at, at a particular college. Can you, can you just speak to that a little bit, um, just ultimately um, around, you know, the, the whole body of work? Okay, yeah, it's definitely more, it's more so about the overall picture and the ultimate feel about how you feel about the school. So, yes, on the court, you want to um, go into a situation that best fits you, your playing style. You know, you want to be around coaches who have your best interest um, and have a, a, a ultimate uh uh, best interest for the team overall. Mm-hmm. Um, so aside from that, you wanna you you wanna go into situation as far as you know. Okay, that's you know, kind of go through a check mark. You know, um, is the place that um, the school's in. You know, the environment is it in. Does it suit me? You know, is the weather too hot? You know, is the weather is the weather too cold? Like you know, uh, is the environment? You know, just depending on your background, is this something that I can see myself in every day? Is it you know, is the, what do the people eat down here? Like, you know, just um, going through a check mark for yourself and, you know, seeing if, if that's a place you can get acclimated to easily to and, and fit in right away. Cause the more comfortable you are um, early, the better off you'll be throughout the season and down the road on, on and off the court. Yeah, man, for sure. Cause I know up in Chicago, I know, I, I know it's not too warm, Mike. I know it's not. Man, <laughs> man, it was it was it was extremely cold. I, I've never been in that situation before, but um, uh, I was able to to get acclimated very quickly. I was around um, great teammates, uh, great coaching staff, and um, and Chicago is known for having um, great food um, also. So uh, it was a good um, it was a good experience. Dope, man. Dope, dope, dope. So. So, Mike, what what would you say is probably the the best piece of advice that that, that you've ever received? Like, j- just like throughout your journey across the board, if it be life, if it be hoops, like whatever it might be, what would you say is something like that that you're like, this is this is something that I hold true uh, just for my life in regards to the best piece of life advice or the best piece of advice you receive? Man, um, I feel like that's a pretty hard question. I, I feel like I've came along. Uh, a long past with a lot of great people who, who told me a lot of great things. So um, I would say particularly to point out, um, uh, I, <laughs> that's kind of hard. Uh, all, right, all right. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me rephrase. You know let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. So it won't be the best piece of life advice you ever see, but yeah. like what, like what's just one gym that somebody dropped and you like, man, this was good. Or just a few. I mean, feel free to, you know, just share. Uh, because, I mean, I, I just just knowing that, you know, just, like just through your journey and people you've come in, in contact with and, and, and the people that you've built and surrounded yourself with, I'm sure that, you know, there are a level of conversation to where something you share, I'm sure, will impact somebody in a very, very uh, tremendous way. I would say um, whatever you do, give it your all and put your heart in it. I would say um, 
that 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 quote or that advice stuck with me and resonated with me and that's something I live by every day that was given to me by um someone I'm close with so yeah man and so so that's something that you apply you feel you apply every area of your life it's like I'm I'm going all the way in Yes, sir. I feel like um, if you're not gonna give it your all, then then why are you doing it? You know, um, we we all have uh, certain you know places we want to get to in life, and um, if you don't put you know your full energy and your full effort into it, um, you know your chances not might be likely. So you know that just uh, gives me a drive to keep working hard every day. You know, just work on my craft, and you know just still being um, you know humble and 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 you know just putting others before me and just moving, moving that way on the court and off the court. I feel like, um, um, something that, that I, I try to do every day. Dope, dope, dope. What would you say is the thing that drives you? Um, a thing that drives me is probably, um, probably my family for the most part. And, you know, just knowing what we all been through individually and, and as a whole, just trying to, you know, make it for my family, make it for them because if, we feel as if, if one of us makes it, we all make it. So, you know, they're, they're ultimately what drives me. So when you say make it, what is, what, what, what does that mean for Mike? For me, um, making it just means, um, you know, just like I said, like, um, you know, I, I'm a professional basketball player, you know, my route may be different from others, but, you know, I still have, uh, uh, I'm still hopeful and I, I still work as if I'm trying to to make an NBA team one day. You know, ultimately, that's my goal still. And, you know, I won't I won't stop trying. So, um, you know, putting that as a goal, I feel is is very vital and sticking to it um, um, is going to take me a long way. Just having that faith. So I would say, you know, everyone's definition of success is different. So that's my you know, that's my uh sense of making it people on the outside may look at me and think i'm i've made it and but you know that's you know i don't feel that way so you know my mom still has to go to work you know my my family still you know has needs and, and stuff that we need to take care of so in my eyes I, I feel like i still have work to do like i think that's awesome man uh and and i mean i just want to let you know just from you know one brother to another, I'm really encouraged just by your hunger, just by your work ethic. And, and just like you said, like some, some people might see you as successful because you know, you're getting, you're getting a hoop because this is what you want to do. You're, you're, you're hooping on the professional stage and at the professional level, uh, man. But the, one of the things I think that really makes you great is just the fact that you're still hungry. Like, you know, you're, you're successful in, in other people's eyes and in your eyes, I, I'm, I'm sure you would say that, you know, you've made, you've reached a certain level of success, but at the same time, you still got your, going back to what you said earlier, you still got your goals that you're looking towards and, and you want to, you know, put the family in, in the best position possible. So man, I, I just want to encourage you, man, just, just, just in that journey, man, uh, man, yeah, just, just keep showing out and just, just keep, just keep showing up because uh, you, you're going to inspire a lot of people. You, you, you definitely will, Thank man. You. Yeah, Thank you. I appreciate that. For for sure, man. For sure. So what? So where? So how 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 big of a role does faith play in your life? And I'm asking you this because I know your handle, Mike Hoops for God. So <laughs> Mike, Mike, bring 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 it all in, man. Talk to us, man. Talk to us. Okay. So um, faith plays a big part of my life. You know, I'm blessed to have uh, uh, two parents who instilled that into me at a young age, not only into me but my siblings. So. Um, I've always had faith of, of, in that always, you know, you know, connected with my, my, my work ethic. So along with that, it allowed me to keep, you know, knocking down barriers for myself, for my family and, and reaching those goals. So, you know, that being instilled to me, uh, I kind of just had that idea when, uh, I first, uh, made my social media accounts. Uh, I think I made my Twitter and, and Instagram and, uh, my freshman year of high school and oh wow yeah so that's the first thing that I thought of I just thought of you know just being myself and you know and I, I was new to it and you know all my peers had it prior to me making one so you know that's the that was the best handle I could think of you know so 
I made my groups for God and I felt like that's what I wanted to, to be known for is, you know, you know, re representing Christ through, through basketball. So that's why I made my groups for God as a handle. Yeah. So would you say that that's probably been one of the, so like among, among the lessons that, that your, that your parents have taught you, would you say that's, that's like one of the, one of the bigger ones or share another, share another lesson with us that, that, that your family has instilled uh, or, or your parents have instilled, man, because I, because I always get excited just getting to hear like some of the background type stuff that, you know, people have learned from, from mom and dad. And, and ultimately we see that that's, that's what shapes, you know, us and that's what shapes everybody else. So just, just, just share a little bit more about that if you don't mind. Um, being a, from, uh, being a Nigerian and coming from our culture, um, my parents actually instilled a lot of great things into me. So, um, I would say my faith is, is one thing that I value and I, and, and it's one thing that, um, that I would say that is the, I could say and put first in and say, that's the best thing that they could give to me, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So other than that, um, everything else, uh, can be, you know, learned and unlearned, you know, how I was raised. So, so in that, in that point, I speak to different cultures and different backgrounds, depending on who you are, where you're from, um, you know, just whatever, take the good and whatever people are saying and it, try to implement it into your life and, you know, and, and, and just try and grow from there. So um, they instilled that into me at a young age. And that's something that I can say um, is I could put first and the other uh, things that they instilled into me as well. Yeah, man. I, I, I mean, I really like that, that last piece about what you just said. I mean, faith, faith is pivotal with, without a doubt. And, and I know that, you know, that, that affects how we operate and that affects our core beliefs and, 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 you know, just what we think about and how we see the world. But, but what you just said, that other part about taking the good um, that like from what people say, and I think that's, pivotal man in, in today's society now more than ever before because it's so easy you know just to assume the worst about somebody just based on something somebody said or you know getting angry because the way somebody looked at us or all this and all that but but right. but, but with you sharing that I think that really just uh I don't want to say levels the playing field but I think that really levels like like the mindset of an individual as opposed to going into a situation ready to be upset at somebody for something that you thought they said, right? Right. I feel like it's more so of um, getting the message out of it, and not so how the message comes comes across. Mm. Like you know, I was taught that at a young age. You know, um, my parents. Uh, you know, discipline was a big thing, and you know, and we had to obey our parents, and that's why we were, you know, taught at a young age. So it's kind of like, um, how would I say this? It's kind of like, uh, yes, my parents were, you know, yelled at me. Yes, you know, they harped at me, but it's more of getting the message of what they're saying, you know. You know, am I doing what was I correct in and why they're yelling at me? You know, why are they wait why are they yelling at me? What are they saying to trying to get to me that I'm not understanding? So, um getting that at a young age and and putting that into my uh, my career as far as basketball, it kind of took me a long way coming across different types of coaches. Um, being said that I've come across the, the very loud coach that's going to, you know, cuss you out and push you and get to where you need to be. And I've come across, you know, kind of timid co coaches that's going to, you know, still coach you, but it's kind of going to, you know, do mm -hmm. it in a, you know, in their, you know, a way that comforts them as a coach. So, Getting that at a young age, it helped me, you know, kind of grow tough skin to always see the message and not the way it's, you know, the way it comes across. So I would say that's very important as far as someone getting advice from a family member or anybody and, and seeing the message and taking the good and bad from it and, and trying to uh, implement it into your life to, to grow. Yeah, man. I, yeah, I think that's a, a, a big piece especially for, you know, student athletes across the board, but then even people who might be working in a corporate job or whatever that may be sometimes, you know, that, like our emotions, we allow, allow our emotions and our feelings to, to affect how we flow um, when, you know, we need to just hear what, what's being said. And, and I know I, I can do a better right. job of that in, in, in some areas because sometimes I just got married uh, almost, it's almost about a year, Mike. Um, and okay. yeah, man, man I, I appreciate that, man. But yeah, me and my wife, I'm, we're learning this whole communication thing. Uh, so yeah, man. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think we all do. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, we all may slip and take into offense about how a person, you know, comes at us. But I feel like, you know, it just takes times for, for you to, you know, everyone's on a different, you know, you know, route or different um, timing as far as their growth. So it just takes everyone a different timing to actually see the message for what it is than for how they're, it's coming across. So, you know, I'm starting to, you know, realize I'm not perfect. <laughs> everyone, no one's perfect. So, uh, so it's more of, you know, I slip up to and, and just getting the message from it. Yeah, man. True story. True story. So, Mike, man, I see you with this fresh hoodie on, man. Talk to me, man. Talk to me. What, what, yeah. you, what, what you got on over there, man? What, what you got on there? Talk to me. Yeah, so this is uh, this is my brand. So, you know, just kind of like to piggyback off what you talked about, um, a lot of people have their brand as their their initials or something unique that kind of puts, implements their, um, their, you know, how they're living on the court or off the court um, mm-hmm. into their name or you know, you see that in a lot of athletes these days, but, you know, I kind of wanted to do it differently. Um, you know, uh, this means a lot to me. Uh, like I said, my faith was instilled to me at a young age. So um, Pray Before I Eat is a PB4IE, I would say, is an acronym that, that stands for Pray Before I Eat. And um, my, my mom always told me before the games, you know, always give thanks that I'm able to play the game. Um, I'm very fortunate and thankful to – you know, to to be talented, talented, and um, you know, through the gifts that God gave me. So, um, throughout high school, she started really kind of telling me that that I need to start doing that, and um, I kind of took it and ran with it. Um, out of high school, it's kind of when I uh, created, it, I would say, my sophomore year, um, and I kind of started to say before each game and kind of getting my teammates um, curious about it, and they would ask, "What does that mean? What does that mean?" and I would just tell them, like, you know, right before I eat, like, uh, you know, I'm going to give thanks before, you know, before I, uh, you know, before I eat. I'm trying to eat on the court as well, you mm-hmm. know. So, so it's like not only was, <laughs> was uh, I would say, is a double meaning as far as um, before each meal, my mom <laughs> was like, you know, don't touch the food unless we bless it, <laughs> like, as a family. Yeah. So that was uh, another thing that correlated that, that resonated with me that, I use as far as basketball, like, you know, I'm trying to eat this game. I'm trying to do well. I'm trying to succeed. I'm trying to be there for my team, for, for myself. So um, I kind of um, correlated that to, you know, eat before I eat. Like, I'm going to give thanks before and after and just give it my all. Give it my all. So that's kind of where I kind of created it. And uh, I kind of had the vision and um, kind of came across it and they – someone close to me put my vision to light so I'm able to you know wear it and a lot of people have reached out to me wanting to you know wear it as well and it just you know humbles me and it 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 makes me feel that that a lot of people can relate to my message and just what I stand for yeah man I think that's really dope I mean I heard you tell me a little bit about it before but then when you break it down you say I even pray before I go out and eat like yeah. on the court that that yeah. just that blows my mind man because i mean and i thought yeah, go ahead go ahead yeah it's all right it's not and it's not only in, in in basketball it's like uh my family it's whatever field you're in like you mm-hmm. know just like i said like my sister she's in the medical field um my other sister she's an entrepreneur you know m- my mother's a teacher so it doesn't always correlate it just correlates to whatever you're doing mm-hmm. it you're uh, respective field. So, um, if you have a test that you're studying for, if you're an undergrad, um, you know, give thanks to God, you know, and, and just be thankful and humble that you're put in that position because, uh, you know, we often sometimes don't realize how uh, fortunate we are and how blessed we are to in the situation we're in because, you know, there's uh, other people less fortunate than us or put in situations that, that, you know, aren't the best. So, uh, I'm all about just giving thanks and just trying to to find ways to um, motivate myself and others around me. So, like I said, it doesn't matter what field you're in. Um, it, it just you know, <laughs> I use it for because I I play basketball. You know, you can use it if you're a firefighter, doctor. It doesn't matter. But you know, that's just like I said, just what I stand for and just my message. Yeah, man. Dang, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you <laughs> yeah man that's dang that's what's up that's what's up wow 
Right. So when when you when you initially thought of it though, did you did you think of it having the double meaning when you initially thought of it, or when you initially thought of it, it was just the focus was, you know, going back to like you said, the lesson that that your mom uh, had with Nah, we, y'all y'all ain't touching the food until somebody <laughs> pray over. Well, I think I I kind of gave it the double meaning. Um, she kind of told me, um, kind of in middle school, I remember was when she started to see, you know, that wow, like my, you know, I feel like you know, she started to see my true talent and like, wow, my son actually might have a, a career in this. And she started, uh, you know, kind of not, um, kind of just as a parent, kind of, you know, guide me in my faith and, and to, you know, to challenge me to to start doing that before games and after games and just to realize how thankful I am. So she kind of made it as far as a basketball thing. But, you know, I also see, see her as a, a mother who also gives me great advice. And one of them was, um, you know, to give thanks before you eat as well, you know, and to just realize how thankful we are to have a meal. So mm. um, I was able to kind of join them together and kind of, uh, you know, just give show appreciation and gratitude to my mom, to my family, and to to myself, and just uh, find a way to express myself. Yeah, man. My I, brand. Yeah, man. I mean, I really love how you how, how you how. How I mean, how how gratitude is is tied into that? How gratitude is tied into your your brand and you know j- just your core values? How faith is is so big there and 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 even work ethic. I mean, I see it all tied into I, I see it all tied into the brand and all tied into you know everything that you're doing. So I thought, man, I, man, you got me speeches over here, Mike. <laughs> man, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate man. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So has like all this COVID and everything has has that affected you you and and hooping overseas and everything like that? What what's what's that been like just with the transition and just the time that we're in? Um, it's definitely affected myself um, and a lot of other players that I know um, during this time. Um, I was actually uh, in the midst of my first season um, overseas. I was in Indonesia um, in the IBL for my first year, and um, uh, I came back home. I believe March. March 18th and uh, at the time I was in Dallas and the whole Dallas County went on um, lockdown um, three days after me arriving. So um, from there it's been quarantine and lockdown since um, we've been on it for about eight or nine months, 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 (laughs) sorry, as a, uh, as a state overall. So um, it's affected, it's affected a lot because uh, I feel like I was in a groove, um, being over there, you know, I was put in a good situation and um, we were I actually had the playoff. So, you know, we were kind of, you know, off a big win and we had another series in a different city and uh, a lot of things were starting to pick up. So I was very excited about, you know, um, getting my feet wet as far as my first year and um, um, trying to uh, produce longevity in, into this career. So it kind of put everything on hold for now, but, um, um, I've been working out and just preparing myself uh, mentally and physically for uh, everything to pick back up again. So, but yeah. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing you getting back over there. I was watching the the uh, mixtape of you on, on uh, Instagram, you know, with, with, with the crossover, with the, with the floater, both hands. And just, I was like, I was like, okay, okay. I see you, Mike. I see you. Yeah. Oh man. But Mike, man, I really, I really want to, uh, want to let you know, I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, hop on beyond the ball today and, and just share a little bit of your background, share your story and, you know, just, just, just sharing about, about your brand. But Mike, I can't Thanks let you go. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, 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 I'm glad, glad to have you, man, but I, I can't let you go just yet. So what, what we like to do on beyond the ball, we have something called the two minute drill. Okay. Okay, and the two minute drill is, is just it's fun. No, no pressure. Even though I know you're probably good under pressure situations, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna ask you a few rapid fire questions, uh, j- just just to hear, um, you, just to, just to get your responses to have a little fun. Then after that, man, we can we can wrap it up. We can put a bow on it, and then I, I'll, I'll let you go back to to living your gym rat lifestyle. Cause I know you're gonna get. I know you're gonna get back. I know you're gonna get in the gym if you ain't already been in the gym once today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I got up early and I did uh, a, a little core action. Um, so I'm about to go later here and, and shoot and uh, get in the weight room. So, so yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mike. So man, if, if 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 you're ready, man, we we can we can kick this thing off. So are are you ready? 
first of all, I, I got to know the, you know, the rules. I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. I'm no. sure ready. Yeah, I'm ready, but I just get <laughs> Okay, you okay, my, my bad. <laughs> my, my bad, my bad. Okay, so look, no, the, so the rule is, is, is pretty simple. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to ask you a few rapid fire questions. And then you just give me the first response that, that comes to mind. That, that, that's it. It's, it's not okay. nothing to, you know, okay. it's not, no, you got to step on the, on this line and shoot the free throw. Nothing like that. <laughs> or you got to do a trick shot. You miss, you're going to get an H. You know, it's nothing, nothing like that. <laughs> okay. I got you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you said, are you ready? <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. Here we, here we go, Mike. Here we go. Here we go. Favorite food. Chicken. What kind of chicken? Fries. Okay. Okay. Uh, your, your favorite Netflix show of preference? Uh, you. You? Yeah. What's that? Uh, it's about a, a, a guy who, who I guess falls in love with a, a girl, but, you know, she wants, uh, I guess he, he's trying to be the perfect person for the girl he likes, and he's kind of too perfect, but in the midst of it, he kind of goes and, and kills people and for her, and he sees it as trying to protecting her, and it kind of leads to a lot of other events, and it's just it's just interesting. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I might might, yeah. need, might need to check that out. Might need to check that out. What what's your what's your favorite podcast? My favorite podcast. Um, I would say the Gilbert Arenas podcast. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. He talks one. about a lot of uh, vintage stuff as far as uh, different areas of basketball and just how he, he was able to be the, the scorer that he was in the game. So a, a lot of gems that he drops. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give, give, give it a ring is next level. Give it a ring is next level. Uh, and uh, l- last question I have for you is what's one tip that you want to give to a current student athlete? One tip, I would say... Uh, for a student athlete, um, time management, um, just the more organized you are, the, the more, uh, I would say, the more smoother your your process will go. Um, just uh, knowing what time to, to get up to knock things out as far as your schoolwork and, and your workout, so you have a, a good balance. Um, I feel like that's important as far as, you know, all student athletes, um, depending depend on uh, whatever sports you play. So. Yeah, I feel like time management would be a good tip. Dope, dope, dope. All right, you you made you made it through. You made it through, and then this is just <laughs> this is just a bonus. Who who is who is the next person that I should interview? Or the next few? You know, you can say a few people, but but who should I interview next? Or who do you want to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Um, it's probably interview man. There's a lot. There's a lot of people, man. Does it depend on the, you know the sport or What's your preference? It's open. It's it's open, man. It's it's, it's open. It's it's who you want. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Get fair enough. Think about it. Yeah. 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 Take take your time, man. Take your time. We we, we connected now. We locked in. But uh, but Mike, yeah. man, uh, j- just like I said before, I appreciate you taking the time to to come and hang out. But uh, just just let people know where where they can find you, how they can connect with you, and then also, man, how they can how they can. Uh, get their hands on, on on some of your merch, man, and everything that you else you got going. Okay, yeah, you can follow me at um, on Twitter and Instagram at Mike Hoops for God, Mike Hoops, the number four God, and um, and yeah, uh, to get my merch. Actually, um, I'm kind of in the process of coming up with a the website for it, so you know that's coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. Man, everybody, man, th- thanks for taking the time to, to hang out with us, and, and thanks for taking the time to listen in. Uh, a- as always, I just want to ask, if you're listening to the podcast, I just want you to share this with one person that you feel can benefit. Just share it with one friend, one student athlete, one coworker, one colleague, whoever it might be, uh, man, j- just so they can uh, get to hear a little bit more about, about Mike, and, and even in addition to that, man, just follow his journey and everything uh, from here. But ballers, I appreciate everybody for listening because this is Beyond the Ball where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. This is Jonathan Jones, and we are out. Sir, thank you, Jonathan, for having me. Yes, sir. I appreciate you.